Have you ever wondered how to include a quiet in your pieces effectively? Hi, it's Simon from Composing Academy, and today I'm going to walk you through step by step how to write and orchestrate for a quiet like this. If you're looking to kickstart your composing journey, be sure to check out my free beginner's guide to writing cinematic music in five easy steps ebook, a link of which is in the description below. Using a quiet in your music is an instant way to add a sense of wonder and often epicness to a piece. Composers regularly make use of the human voice to help give additional tonal colors. And a quiet can be extremely effective when blending with other instruments in the orchestra, helping to give your music an additional human and lifelike quality. Most choirs are split into four parts. Sopranos and altos, which are made up of women, and the tenors and basses, made up of men. The sopranos are the highest pitch singers and have a range between C4 or middle C up to a B flat 5 or two B flats above middle C. Next we have the altos, who have a slightly lower range between an F3 or the F below middle C up to D5. Both the sopranos and altos are written in the treble clef. The tenors are the next lowest group with a range between B2 and G4, followed by the basses with a range from E2 up to C4 or middle C. When notated together on a score, the tenors and basses are normally written out in the bass clef. Now of course every human being is unique, and these ranges are standard ranges that most singers can reach. There will be basses who can go down lower than the low E, or sopranos that can sing higher than the high B flat. If you're using samples in a DAW, you'll probably be constrained to the range that was recorded by the sample library. Although if using a sampler such as Contact, it is possible to extend the range of recordings using pitch shifting if absolutely required. In music for film, TV and video games, the size of a choir is often dictated by the budget available for recording. A large choir could consist of up to 64 singers, with roughly 16 singers for each of the four sections. At the other end, you could have, say, eight singers on each part, making a total of 32 singers. So here is an orchestral piece I've written, which makes use of a choir. The choir is present throughout, using a variety of different singing styles, ranging from delicate O's to a more aggressive forte staccato style. So here in the opening, the music has a calm yet brooding feel. The instrumentation is mostly long strings and the sopranos and altos singing O's. The choir's role here is more of a blending role, singing underneath the string section to help give it a warmer quality. You can see that I'm using the dynamics to help give some musical expression to the samples. I'm using the expression and modulation controls to achieve some crescendos and diminuendos, which is similar to what the strings are doing. Having a choir sing in harmony particularly using triads, is a really easy way to get a good sound. You can see that in this section, I'm using just the notes in each triad. If consecutive triads have shared notes, then it can be useful to tie these notes across to help glue the sound together between harmonic changes. Make sure, when you're writing choir parts, to be aware of giving places for the choir to breathe, as singers obviously rely on breath to produce a sound. If you're writing for real singers, a note on the score to stagger breathing can help, which indicates to the choir for each singer to try to breathe at a slightly different time to the other singers. Of course, if you're just using samples, then breathing doesn't matter. Like with the brass and woodwinds, writing to take into account breathing will help to make your choir writing sound more realistic though. So let's take a listen to the opening section with the strings included. Moving on, from bar 18, the energy starts to ramp up, and from bar 22, the choir becomes centre stage, singing the main melodic material using short staccato syllables. 
While the choir supported the strings in the previous section, the strings, also playing a short staccato pattern now, are now supporting the choir. The choir sample library I'm using in this piece is Requiem Professional by 8DO. And for this section, I'm using a staccato patch, which has various short syllables available. To make use of the different syllables, key switching is needed. Key switching is where specific notes on the keyboard, normally towards the extreme low end, are used to trigger different sounds. You can see here at the top I have the actual musical notes, but down the bottom here are the various key switches I've used to trigger the different syllables. Whereas the previous section made use of triads and block chords, this staccato section features the choir in a more melodic role. The sopranos and altos have the main melody, while the tenors and basses are singing a constant A. The chord progression throughout the section, and indeed the whole piece, is D minor, B flat major, F major, and C major. Having the A in bars 24 and 25 during the B flat chord helps to add a touch of dissonance to the overall harmony of the piece. From bar 30 to 37, I've divided the choir a bit more. The sopranos and altos are occasionally singing different notes, with the basses grounding the harmony with the root note of each triad on the first beat of each bar. The tenors are then answering the basses on beats 2 and 3 in each bar. As the music progresses from bars 38 to 58, the choir is gradually divided more to help achieve a thicker sound as the energy intensifies. The sopranos are singing an octave higher, with the altos divided, singing notes an octave lower, as well as including another pedal note of A all the way through. For the second half of the piece, the sopranos are again given the main melodic material, while the rest of the choir is supporting, singing in harmony, mainly using notes from the triads. Instead of playing short staccato syllables, this time more sustained longer syllables are heard, using this Mercato patch from the same library. Again, having the choir sing in block chords is an easy way to achieve an impressive sound from the choir. Between bars 88 and 93, I then push the range of the sopranos helping to create a climax in the music with a high G's in bars 92 and 93. The ending sees the choir return to its staccato sound from before, helping to give a further shift in intensity going into the ending. For beginning composers just getting started, I would recommend getting to grips with the more simple and often cheaper libraries first. The free Spitfire Audio Labs range comes with a choir sound which you can download. Next up, I would recommend Nucleus Light by Audio Imperia, 
priced at $99. Although this sample library contains the rest of the orchestra, its choir section features both sustained and staccato choir patches. Considering the array of orchestral sounds available, this library is amazing value for money. Moving up the list, I would also recommend Metropolis Arc 1 by Orchestral Tools. Like Nucleus, Metropolis is an orchestral sample library which includes some amazing choir patches as well as some outstanding orchestral sounds. It's priced at €549. Euros. Finally, the library I've used in this piece is Requiem Professional by ADO. It's towards the top end of the choir libraries available on the market and is currently priced at $498. Okay, that's a brief introduction into writing for a choir. Remember that a choir can be used in a variety of ways, including blending with other instruments to offer a variety in colour, or being at the forefront of an orchestration singing melodies. As always, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more composing tutorials and tips. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below as well.